Howdy folks, welcome back to the Mile Arc. We have another special video today. My 738 pilot friend is back, but this time I'm going to fly and he's going to watch me fly and hopefully pipe in if he has anything to say. Although he's off to the side of the microphone. If he does say anything and it can't hear it, I'll subtitle it. But hopefully he has things to say. Um, good or bad, doesn't matter. Otherwise, we are doing a subscriber request today. A while ago, someone requested that I fly to Tivat in Montenegro. And I looked it up, and sure enough, it's one of the dangerous approaches, which on my own, I wouldn't do like the top 10 of something, but if they're requested, I absolutely will. So we are going to not only do the Tivat approach, we're going to do it in the 727. 200 advanced, a little bigger than normal. You'd probably see the 100 normally, but I thought we'd do the 727. We could have taken the B-1900, but that'd be too easy. We could have taken a GA aircraft, but that'd be too easy. So we're going to fly slant alpha, but then we're going to do the visual circle to land on runway 17, which is the one that everybody, everybody talks about. Actually, it says 14 on my chart, but it's the 17 in the sim, whatever. Something that happens sometimes. My nav date is out of date. So runway 14 circle to land visual. So we'll do slant alpha to a waypoint and then use DME. To go out and circle around, you can look up the chart for yourself if you want to. I could actually Google this one. I'm really bad about international charts, but I found it. So that's what we're doing today. It's going to be a very short flight because we're starting at Lima Golf Kilo Romeo in Greece, Corfu, Greece. I was going to start further down the coast, but the next reasonable airport would have more than doubled the trip. So it's going to be a really quick, quick flight. I think it's only, yeah, it's less than 200 nautical miles. So... Um, quick, quick flight, but that's fine because the whole point is to do this approach. So I did not practice, and I have a real pilot looking over my shoulder in an old school aircraft, doing it the old school way. So I'm a little nervous because when I fly this myself, normally I do a pretty decent job and I nail the landings every time. But now that someone's watching me, I have a lot of pressure on myself. We're using an appropriate livery for once. We're not going to use like American Airlines or Pan Am or anything. We're going to use something for the area. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I swear there's one more thing I was going to say about it. I can't remember. That's just how it goes. When I think of it, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it. Otherwise, I think we're about ready to get started. Just checking out my chart here. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Super fast, super easy. Oh, I didn't remember what I was going to say. We turned off weather because it's insanely windy in real life. And the clouds are, the base is only 2,000 feet. So we won't even be able to do our visual approach right now. Because for the visual approach, you have to have sight at 2,000, well, better than 2,000 feet. So we'd be in trouble. So that's how it's going to be. No weather. I apologize. I know you like my crossman landings when I talk it and crash things a lot. But anyway, no wind, no weather today. Apologize about that. So we're going to hop inside. And I'm going to show... My pilot friend here that I have presets set up, and a lot of you know this if you're watching, but it's good to review. I preset set up for all my views. So this is my main flying view. This is my IFR view. And then over here is my lower engineer panel. Then my upper engineer panel. And then my radios and autopilot. Because I I used to have autopilot on my yoke, but the problem was that the key binding commands change with every update. And I couldn't disengage autopilot, so I actually come down and click it now. And this is weather and TCAS, which I think work. I don't fly with other planes, so T um, TCAS is pointless. But I believe the weather actually works if we had weather. And then this is my cheat view when I lose this, the side of the runway. I come up, I go like this <laughs> to find the runway. This is the lower overhead with the lights and some other things. And then up here's the upper. And then back here is APU. And then I've got all these key binds. I've got looking over the wing to the right, wing to the left. And then this is my flap schedule on the left, which I try my best to adhere to the flap schedule. I get lap flaps out a little early because I start to panic. And I kind of do the like really slow flight to buy myself some time thing. And then close up. Oh, no, that's right. This was actually um for throttle and to make sure my spoilers are armed. This is the TCAS thing. And then this is the rear view for the air stairs. And then we call this the GoPro view. If you have a GoPro over your head, this is outside, which is different every time I push it. This is taxi. This is engine um, gauge cluster. And this is whiskey compass because it likes to drift just like real life. It'll drift. So 
So my checklist, which I've mentioned before, there's a combination of the actual Boeing POH that I read most of it and the um, designer's checklist. The designer actually has a checklist. You can follow their checklist, but it's watered down. Of course, I like to be a little more, a little more um, challenged. So I forgot to get our landing altitude. I'm sure it's like 20 feet. Yep. Okay. All right. So... Um, normally what I do is I have it ready for boarding before I start recording, but we are completely cold and dark, which is fine. So we got our landing altitude, we got our distance, we know how we're taking off, the weather doesn't apply. It's early morning, I think it was 6 o'clock in the sim. We then need to get some ground power. Is it this one? I can't remember. Yeah, we're going to get, oh, first we're going to see, there's, there's the digital one. I don't like the digital, I like the analog. GPU and air cart, and then we're going to turn that volume down because this plane gets loud. Um, external power, which is right here. And the rear stairs down on the R. And then I'll clear my radio frequencies if I practice the flight, but I didn't practice this. All right, so next, see the 3D sound. You hear it move over to the right really far. Wow. I'm glad, uh, I'm, glad I'm not uh, a new hire on this airplane. There's, uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Already there's a lot going on, and we haven't even done anything yet. And you're doing the job of three guys. Three guys. Three. Yep. So then, when you want to bring up a weight and a balance, that other plane we had to go to a menu, this is their own. So it randomizes every time you start this up. So um, I'm not super good about the Mac and everything. I just kind of say, we don't need this many people. Except, why isn't it taking my clicks? There you go. I'll just like, you know, move things around and... Because it's a short flight, there's not going to be that many people on here. Um, maybe a couple more rich people, though, <laughs> because we can't. So that's going to be heavy in the front. So we're not going to have to move some people around a little bit, um, take some people down, you know, just whatever. I call this the bathroom, even though it's not. I'm like, there's always two people in the bathroom. You know, it's just that thing. Cargo, of course. Um, and then distance. So we need 200, they say, for this, plus an extra 150. And, or it's, it's, you need enough for your alternate airport plus 150. I just go nuts. So we have about a 200 nautical mile flight. So what I'm going to do, so it's at a thousand, oh, where is it? It's at a thousand and one. That's how it loads. So we're going to go down this 200 nautical mile flight where I'm going to do like 450 or 500. In case you have to go around a couple times, which I'm bad about go arounds. I just like nose dive and land. <laughs> Because they say in 727, if you can see the runway, you can land on it, right? Um, so optimal altitude, 36. No, we're not getting that high. But anyway, I really do need to study this max stuff a little better. I just try to keep the blue thing in the middle. There's one plane, if you put the cargo in before the passengers, it tips backwards. <laughs> it's really funny. The 73 will do that. Will it really? Yeah. Wow. We use a tail stand. Really? Yep. Really? Yep. See, I'm learning even more. This is amazing. That's awesome. So you actually use a tail stand. Okay, so it doesn't tip backwards. I never would have thought, never would have guessed. Whoops, wrong one. There we go. So now we're set there. Um, battery. All right, so here we go. So like a lot of these videos, starting this plane's like 25 minutes. The flight's like two. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of like real life too, I guess. If you're flying like me up to Chicago, yes. you're, at the, yeah. you're at the gate longer than you're in the air. All right, battery on. There we go. Trip the APU. Um, I trip both because I watched a video a million years ago of a guy doing it. I don't think you have to, but that's just how this one person did it. And since I don't know anything. So this start is maybe a little bit more realistic than that other one. Yeah. Perhaps. That's, that's uh, quite realistic. So I hold it for a while. I think you're supposed to hold it until at least gets to one, but it's because of the simulator. So we'll hold it. And then what I'll do normally is I'll let it warm up, but I'll edit that out of the video. But we're to keep talking through this a little bit. Um, flap test lights off, which is that way. There we go. Um, and then we'll let it do its thing, and then we'll close the things, whatever you know they are. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can like. Bus ties or whatever. Yeah, I think you can like take courses in college just on a 727 panel. I think. I'm not sure. So I'm not sure how far you're really supposed to make the temperature go. In the older versions of this, it was really fast. It would just spin up. You know, sure. now it's real time, so I just wait till it gets about here, and then I will close. But I got to do field first, and then that. And you heard it click, yep. and um, that should take external power off, and it did. 
All right, so now, overhead, the lighting logo, turn that on, wing, turn that on. Uh, my understanding is you do beacon and stroll before you start the plane, and you do navigation at the end of the runway before you take off, or is it different based on who you work for? It is It is kind of a different based on who you work for. Normally, okay. beacon's on for airplane movement, Okay. and, um, and nav lights are on. At least in the night, we have them on okay. all times. All times, And then okay. strobes are uh, when you're clear for takeoff for land. And, oh, and, and then okay. through uh, exiting the runway. Okay. So or okay. anytime you cross an active runway, you're supposed to okay. have strobes, strobes on. Okay. Because, yeah, I've um, done a lot of research and a lot of pilot forums, real-life pilot, not sim, and no one seems to agree. So my thing is, like, it, just read your sure. company rule book. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that way you'll be safe. You will get yelled at on the ramp if you leave your strobes on. Someone will come really? on the radio and say strobes. Really? And everyone checks. That's awesome. All right, so interior. So this airplane, um, because it's daytime now, you won't see it. But what I'll do is at some point after we park it maybe, I'll show you the night lighting in this thing because it's absolutely ridiculous, the quality of night lighting. But since it's day, we don't really need to do anything. So I'm just going to leave this alone. But maybe after we park it, I'll make it night because it's absolutely crazy. Um, no smoking signs are, well, that should always be on these days. And then fasten seatbelts. And then emergency light arm, like this. Um, stall warning. This is the one, if you hear this, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. You cannot recover a stall on this one. Window heat, which you brought up in two videos ago would have been now, um, makes the windows more flexible because which would make sense right like if you think of something that's frozen will break too easy all right so now we're going to move back ap bleed all right so turn those oh wait that's right and this one they're all open for some reason it's really weird that's the previous version these were all closed and now for it loads open i'm not sure why cooling doors confirm open and they are um do the dash lights oh this is so cool like if you hit whoops this one if you hit the fluorescent light, you can hear it click on. Does that click <laughs> <tick? It's> amazing? <laughs> like these little things. All right. Um, disconnect the APU and air cart. So that'll change the sounds a little bit. DC meter to ESSTR, which is, I don't know what that means, essential something. I don't even know what that means. Gasper fan on. Right AC pack on. That's the transformer rectifier unit. Okay. AC to DC power. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what that bus. is. Okay, I know Central what that bus, is. Bus one and bus two. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, air pressure set cruise. If we get to eighteen thousand, whoops! If we get to eighteen thousand, we'll be lucky. Um, do you go one thousand above your cruise? We mm. said it at cruise. You said at cruise. Highest right? plane cruise level. Okay, because I do GA. That like could be a. Uh, Okay. Well, and then this one I do cruise, but like the the 1900, I always go oh, a, a yeah. thousand above. That's what I was reading. But all right, um, where was I? Landing is 20 feet, so um, that's going to be 20 feet. Piece of cake set to ground, wow. and it is. All right, flight plan stuff. So what we're going to do is my little sketch pad here. We're going to leave, and this is where the slant alpha comes in. So we're gonna leave at 114.7, like that. And then we're going to 117.7, like this, which means I put 117.7 in this one so I can see it on DME2. Cause you know, another pilot mm -hmm. would have, have it over there, but I'm only one person, so. And then, I set up the next one, which will actually be our last one because it's such a short flight, and that is 111.3 will tell us when to turn. So just double checking, 111.3, 117.7, and then here, 177, and then 114.7. Boom, that is it. We are gonna put the NDB in because I can. Why am I forgetting where the NDB goes? Oh, ADF, <laughs> that's why, because I don't use it very much. Uh, 345. So these, you gotta get the right click spots. See, they gotta find that middle click spot because I need a four. Or maybe it just comes down like, no? How do I get the middle one? 
There we go. See, every airplane is different too, because a designer can use different things when they code it. And so sure. your mouse wheels sometimes scroll work, sometimes it doesn't. Like this just has two click spots, but three numbers. Otherwise, otherwise you have like inside, outside, and then there's like a top one for the middle. It just depends. And I'll repeat that. I'll, I'll duplicate it um, just because sometimes I forget where to look. Cause you know, that's the other thing. I fly so many different aircraft in the sim that unless I were to spend a month on each one, I forget things. Like, you know, if I'm up here, you know, like I can fly slant alpha on this, but if I try to fly slant alpha in the B-1900, I got to forget everything I know because I use GPS for nav one. And then you got to pull down the um, thingamabobber <laughs> to change your course. <laughs> you know, I can't, why am I drawing the blank? But you know what I mean? It's very yeah. different. And I got the digital thing up again. How did that happen? We want the old school one. There we go. Oh, neat. All right. So flight plan, I got the radios tuned. And then this obviously will do that to um, our ADF so we see it. We'll use the VOR so when we come in for visual, we can keep track of, you know, where it is. And then DME. Normally I go like, oh, normally that yoke isn't in the way. In this model, they must have moved the yoke up. Because normally I can see DM2 just fine. Interesting. I guess I'll have to come down here to look, huh? Wow. Alrighty. Um, and we're leaving at 1, 14. I think I can drag this, yeah. Except it's so fast. Oh, there we go. No, we're not leaving. That's the, we're leaving at 355. That's the other thing that I know I do wrong is instead of like inbound outbound, I just use one direction on the compass. So like if we're heading east, no, if we're flying west, I won't use like outbound 90. I'll use 270 mm -hmm. because that's west. Yeah. But a lot of times when I look at sky vector, it'll say like, you know, 100, but it's going, you know, west, northwest. But I'm like, oh, that's 90, 180 plus 100. And yeah. That's how I do it. So I know I probably don't do that right, but that's just how I do it. Yeah, you're just flying on that outbound radial. Right, right. You're outbound on that radial. Right, but I always add 180 to it so that I can get, like, the 355 instead of using this sure. backwards where it flips backwards. Yep. So we're leaving at 355 and then 53 miles out, which this hopefully has DME. We'll switch to the other VOR. Slant Alpha. I have a tutorial on Slant Alpha. No one else has done a Slant Alpha tutorial on YouTube. I got the only one. Unfortunately, it's an hour and ten minutes long. <laughs> but it does everything in how I do it. So that's the flight plan stuff for me. That's my FMS. <laughs> this airplane, though, you can you can actually pay a couple bucks and get SIVA. And you can fly SIVA right here. Wow. Yeah, so I'm like, I want to do it and learn it. But then I got to learn a lot. That's complicated. Or you can get an FMS, and it goes right here, too, if wow. you really want to do FMS. And then you would, somewhere in here, you would tell it you have nav. You would change it to either SIVA or FMS. So that there's other things you can There's other things, because who many, how many people fly slant alpha but me? Oh, my gosh. I'll hear YouTubers be like, we're going to fly slant alpha. I'm like, that's actually kind of GPS when you tuned in the last radio. <laughs> it's like, that's not really slant alpha. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's our flight plan. So that's going to go over here somewhere. And altimeter barometer doesn't matter, 299 or 2, because we don't have weather turned on. But we would pull up the map and we would click on it. And we, whoops, that's the thing. Got to kind of click on the right thing. Oh my gosh, what the heck? I'm clicking on the aircraft, is what's happening. There you go. And then boom, we get weather. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, oh, time to close the rear stairs, which is, oh, close the map too, which a lot of people don't know that these stairs open. It's shift F1. Don't do just F1. That'll move your throttles. It's shift F1 to close the stairs. All right, moving along. Now, this is where some people turn on just two pumps to do the engines. Other people turn on all eight before they do the engines. So I just turn them all on. Um... And then turn the AC packs off. And air bleed, we're low, we're low altitude. So we're gonna open up all of them. If you're high altitude, you would do APU in just one and make sure this goes above 30, but obviously we're not gonna have a problem. Um, set better pushback. We're not doing pushback today because I think we can just do a, yeah, we're just gonna pull out. Yep, we're gonna turn around. 
and we're going to do whatever runway that is out there, which is going to be 35. All right, so no pushback for us. So we're just going to start the engines right here. Uh, I do two, three, one. A lot of people say three, two, one. Some people say high altitude. You have to do one, two, three. Oh, whatever. I just whatever works. You cannot do two, three, one if you're high altitude, though, because you, the bleed valves don't work that way. You got to build up pressure. So we are going to do two, three, one. Wait a second. Nope. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Two, three, one. So we just do ground. And I close it, and we come down here. And when N2 is 25%, yes, 25%. Is it that button? Yeah, that button. It's been a long time since I've flown this. <laughs> I used to fly this every day. You're making it look easy. It's been a long time, man. I hope I can. I just hope I can land, because I land best in this aircraft. But I'm not putting pressure on myself, so we'll see. The little ones, like I flew the little trike yesterday, and I was bouncing and oh my gosh, that was terrible. So then, what you're supposed to do is let it stabilize and the pressure goes out, but it's a simulator, so I just keep going. <laughs> I just keep on going. Sometimes I'll, if I'm trying to be completely accurate, I'll wait, but, so yeah, it'll stabilize at 60, and then light goes out. So this one is at 10. And like in the video, I edit, they'll be like, I'll just like go jump down and it edits out. But we'll keep it running for now like we did the APU. So there's 20, 2, 24, and there's 25 by the time we get down there. And let's do this one right. We'll let it, we'll let it stabilize. So you heard the ground click up yep. above? I assume it's the same thing for the 737. Yeah, so yeah, clicks on at 56%. Okay. So this one clicked at 32-ish, I think. So they go lights out, it'll stabilize at 60, come back up for engine one. And normally, of course, you do this during pushback, obviously, but not today, because we don't have a pushback. And then just the quality, the guy, um, the guy who is part of the FlyJ Sim team, his name is Val Dude or Val, we call him. And I watch his streams a lot when he, right now he's working on, well, he's doing, yeah, he's working on the Q400, or the Dash 8, sure. the new one that they're doing. Although, sometimes they got to go back and they'll, they'll update patches. Whoops, I better come down and um, introduce fuel. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now, this time we do have to let everything stabilize, because now we have to do hydraulics next. So we got to wait. And then hydraulics, if you don't set your hydraulics right, you won't have tiller control and you won't have flaps. Right, just like real life, you got to get that right, so or else you get in big trouble. So, for some reason, this most recent update, um, A is always on. I think that's what people can just get in and fly. Sure. What I could do is go through and turn more things off before I start recording, but I'm not going to worry about that. But we'll turn on B. We just actually turn on those at different times. So now we come up here and we close the generator ties. We only have to do three. We just have to do all nine. Now there's just three, and then galley power can come on and my. Poor child is coughing in his room next door. That's okay. Both the AC pack can come on because people are sweating. Where, where in my AC pack? There it is. And then this duct heat will pop on. It's a bug because cargo heat goes to normal. And that's supposed to be fixed by the cooling door adjustment as you fly, which I leave them open because I'm one person. Um, but then that light will come on sometimes. Well, maybe they fixed it now. Normally that pops on. Okay, maybe they fix it because the plane updates automatically. Wow. So I don't even know if it gets updates unless they check the history. Um, how the little reset buttons are twisted because that's not exactly how they are in the airplane. Yeah. Use, they just get twisted. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Essential powers to generator. Why am I drawing a blank? Here they go. Generator one. Uh, AC meters to bus tie and they automatically are in this version. Make sure there are no lights. So the thing is if there are no lights, then you did it right. <laughs> if there's a light, start over. <laughs> All right, fuel heat off, which already is in this version. Anti-ice, which I'm not super good about it. I don't, so that's on, I guess. This, I don't touch. I just do the pedo heat. That's all I do. Um, but I need to learn it someday. That's the thing, like, if I want to do the next level, I can learn how to do anti-icing in the 727. Okay, this is the nerve-wracking part, is the APU, because um, you hear a wind down. And it freaks me out. See? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening? But everything's still running. All right, press your switch from ground to flight, which is here somewhere. 
and cabin pressure temp control so we can or temp control so we can do like hot or cold i just do auto sometimes if i'm feeling you know i'll just like turn it up a little bit just because i can see the temperature i <laughs> went up to 40 degrees um gas per fan comes off air bleed too closed and check reference and speed bugs now i used to call this the v card because in the previous version it was called the v card because all the v's so landing so take off we're going to do the standard 20 flaps rotate out 112 and then you hit set bugs and then set your bugs so boom you just look for that um i don't know what the second bug would be for that's your rotation yeah. this is flaps have to be up by then i don't know what this is i should know i really really should know i don't know Alrighty, so now, oh, now we do, is it, well, not that one, well, that was loud, this one. Uh, turn on the system, TCAS, but it doesn't matter. So if we had if we had real weather, actually the radar works in this now, wow. it would do everything for you. Um, okay, here we go. Taxi lights, come on. Oh, I don't need those yet, but um, I'm going to forget to turn that on, but whatever. I actually have a note turn on now, but I know that's not right. RTO. And begin taxi. So flaps are 20, which is at 6 or 4 o'clock. So I'm going to do here. I'm, oh, gosh, I've never used rudder pedals on this. My rudder pedals on this yet. This is going to be interesting. Come out here where it's nice and loud. Take the parking brake off. And this one, I think you got to goose it quite a bit to get rolling. And, oh, shoot. I gotta reset my rudders. There we go, now they're working. All right, I forgot I have to reset my rudders every time I start the sim. Now we're working. Parking brake off, and then what I'll do, I'll start getting flaps down as we taxi. Because that's how I've seen it done. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be. Um, see, now it really rolls, and I gotta draw back throttle. I always taxi from the outside. <laughs> I use a lot of outside views just because it's cool. It is cool. It's a view you never ever get to see. Them. Right. I hope there's a turnaround over there. Because I didn't see. Yeah, we'll have to back taxi. All right, so because we're going to back taxi, I'm going to turn on my landing lights. Is that what you would normally do in yep. real life? Okay, that's yep. what I do because we're going to back taxi. So um, there we go. It's so quiet inside, isn't it? That, oh, at the back. that clicking you hear is my HVAC in the house. It's not part of the sim. <laughs> <laughs> nice subwoofer effect. Mm -hmm. This thing is so fun. We got two more to go on the flaps. This is nice on the rudder pedals. Oh my gosh. And one more for flaps. You ready for the next checklist? Oh, I started download. I started getting that Zebo mod together. Can't wait to play. So, I can't wait to play. we'll probably just maybe this week then. Yeah. Because um, so I might as well. So yeah. So the pre two videos ago, because they threw the other one in there, we did the default 738 with my 738 pilot friend, and um, before I even read anybody's comments, I'm getting the Zebo mod going, and he's going to come back probably in the next day or two before he flies out again for a month or <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> he's actually home for four days, so we're taking advantage. Um, we see each other in the backyards all the time, but don't get to do much like this. So yeah, we'll probably get the Zebo mod going in the next day or two or three before he flies out again. So look forward to that. That'd be, that'd be super cool. All right. So I better start slowing down, huh? Um, do we have a turnaround up there? Yeah, we do. Okay. So how would you turn around from the right or to the left or does it matter? You know, normally... Um, I would, I would start the turn to the right since the captain is driving and sitting on the left hand okay. side. Okay. So he can see better to line up as he gotcha. Uh, turn to the right and then hard left all the way back around. Okay. But um, really, there's. Let's yeah. see if I can do it appropriately. I love how the lights go on the water, which I know is not unusual. That is very neat detail. Mm -hmm. So somebody, a hobbyist, designed this airport. Any every airport you see, actually, I guess there are. A few freebies by like Aerosoft or something that did the biggie biggies like um, De Gaulle and the huge ones internationally. 
but for the most part, every airport you see is a hobbyist like me who designed some. I've designed 30 or 40 of them, tiny airports. Oh my gosh, these rudder wow, pedals, rudder pedals are so <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you imagine like pulling and pushing on the yoke? It just doesn't work very well. All right, so let's get kind of... See, I can never judge where the middle actually is. I, let's see, I'm probably to the right, I would think. Yeah, I, I, now I know I am, but... All right, parking brake is... Boom, down there. There we go. Let's see if I was anywhere near it. Yeah, yeah close enough. Good. Okay, so here we go. Uh, check flaps, trim. Oh, this is kind of cool. If you go like this, you just click the green thing, and it trims for you. Is that nice? Very cool. Landing lights are already on. F check the flaps. I think we did many times. It's, um, what is the flaps? 20, we said. Note the time on the clock. But uh, where's my autopilot th thing on my checklist? Did I erase an accident? See, what I used to do in the previous version of this aircraft is you could come down here and set all your autopilot now. So then at the end of the runway, you bump it and it's done. But it doesn't work in this version. So what I would do is I would have a set, I'd have the flight director thing pitched to the first line. Oh my gosh, look at <laughs> Apparently this is not the active run. <laughs> so he's gonna stop there, because I'm there. He will not move now, because they're that smart to know he's, he's lining up to wait. Oh, I bet he's gonna back taxi like I did. Yeah. And he just has to wait now. I mean, there's no collision, so we're just gonna go right through him, but wow. that's super funny, isn't it? Alrighty, um, so for Fodge Autopilot, I'll review what I'm going to do. Um, heading bug obviously has to be set to runway, which is this. We're not exactly facing runway heading, but we'll go like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to fly to 355, which is not much. That, I mean, that's where we're headed. Runway 35, so it's pretty much runway heading. So what we'll do is um, I'll engage Autopilot. And then use a heading bug and then kind of get us. I know it's probably within 40 degrees and we already are, but I'll tweak it a little bit because that VOR is going to go doing, doing, doing. You know what I mean? Because it's right yep. behind us right now. And then um, just make sure this is on the first line so we don't stall or nosedive. And that's a review of autopilot. So note the time on the clock. This clock is screwed up. I did a 45 minute flight and it said four hours. And I don't have my time, my thing sped up. So I'll just look at the real life clock 8 49 p.m. on a Monday, I guess. Um, and we're ready to take off, and then we're going to do gear up, flaps up, quickly, quickly, and auto brakes, uh, whatever, all that normal stuff. Alrighty, so, um, let me, next thing, then 53 miles, we got to pay attention to our navigation. So, in this aircraft, you do not take off at 100, you take off at 97. Um, I'm actually going to hold the, whoops, hold the brake while I spool this up, because it's not that long of a runway. And then I'll show you what we do to not blow the engines up. Let's go all the way up like that. I'm kind of doing like a drag race, I know, but there you go. Bye, buddy. Oof. That made me nervous. You can see his heat in front of us. See that? <laughs> yeah. Like the jet wash. It's going all the way down. All right. Don't tell us to rotate, but I know when. A lot of right rudder to get this. And it should just lift off. You don't even need to do it. Look at this all by itself. Check that out. No tail strike. Look at that. Gear coming in. Flaps coming in like crazy because look at that. And there is oh, autopilot. I'm just going to gauge it right now. Oh, I didn't do altitude. That's what I missed. Um, let's just do 18. Whoops. Let's just do 18,000. Well, that was fast. So 18,000 in case we get there. Um, heading select we'll do now. We'll do alt select. Let's do is hold of. Did I bring it? Okay, that's good. Let's do that. Now that will do 250. See how fast this goes? I mean, it's ridiculous. So we're going to bring throttles back right now. Because it's going to climb now at like 4,000 feet per minute. <laughs> which I've heard is possible. Yeah. Um, we can go up to 250 though. So let's see how it's going to nosedive. So normally I'll inch it. Oh, we got to clear. Okay, so let's, um, let's, no, let's go this. Oh my God, whoa. Let's go like this to get within that 40 degrees. And let's do, let's hope we don't hit that mountain. I don't look up any departure. Okay, this this is why. If you do the right departure, okay, that's fine. Um, let's bring this up to 250. It's going to nose dive a little bit, which I really don't care because we don't even need to get that high. And localizer's lit up. So it knows it's there. Sure. And then once it picks up, it'll turn blue. And hopefully, 
Yeah, this should be between this mountain and that one. So we should be good. We should pick this up right between these mountains and turn left. Um, all the eyes can come up here and do turn that off and come down here and do I just click it? Yes, this one you just click. Um, spoiler, Jeremy didn't use them. Don't need to worry about barometer at 18,000. How far out is this? I'm going to increase her rate of climb because I want to clear these mountains. I don't really know what the VOR is and it's not moving yet. Okay, we're 18 miles and we're going away from it, which we should be. That means I got that right. So what we're going to do then, so basically we're hands-free, right? Yep. Already. Um, just so when this gets to DME here, it gets to be 53. We're going to change to the other VOR. So there you go. But you can imagine wearing headphones like this with it cranked up. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I, I, I've I fallen asleep before. Um, so now what we're going to do... So you want to keep, if the trick is if you keep the engines at 92% or less and one, which technically I think you're supposed to do N2 in real life, somebody said, but the designer made it N1. Let me make sure my notes are right. Yeah, N1. There's a big argument online. They're like, you're supposed to use an N2. He's like, I made it N1. So as long as you're 92% or less N1, you'll be fine. Gotcha. So really what you're doing is you're keeping an eye on the oil temperature and oil pressure then making adjustments accordingly. See, sure. we're so steep. Look at the pressure. <laughs> And then once you level off, that'll take care of itself. So, um, without having Sky Vector up, because when I'm recording, I can't click in and out. I don't know where this VOR is. I mean, I drew my map, so it's over here somewhere. Sure. Doesn't really matter. Alrighty, so that's that. Um, I guess we can climb. We can just go for it. Let's just go. Where are we at? We're at 9,000 feet. Okay, so we aren't going to... Yeah, let's see. I was going to increase our speed, but it'll nose down, and we're kind of close to those mountains. Whoops, I didn't actually mean to do that, but since we are, let's look at it. I think it might be finding that localizer. I think so, yeah, because it's turning around now. And it hunts a lot. Yeah, the VOR, rather, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I guess in real life, these airplanes were notorious for hunting a lot, too. Hmm. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Way cool. Isn't that awesome that you can look back? where we took off on that little island. There we go, it's blue. So it should turn us any second. We're gonna clear the mountains and we're over 10,000. So I'm slowly gonna inch us up to 280. It's best climb in this, I think. I don't have that written down anymore. 280, yes I do. 280 is what the designer, Jack is his name. He says he designed this to climb at 280. So it'll nose down for the speed, but I'm going to bump us up here to 92 just to ride that red line on the oil temps. So that's actually 94. That will catch fire. Then, of course, when you cruise, you pretty much cruise at idle or else you overspeed. Um, and then is it 29,000 feet you can switch to not mock hold, which we're not going to get to, but I, th yeah. I yeah. think that's what it is. Okay, we can nose down now to 280. There we go, and we're on, we're on the VOR path, and we're 31 miles. See, that's the thing. Like with an FMS, you can in a sim, you can just click it, forget it. Sure. You know, with auto throttle too, because I there's a triple seven model. It's outdated now, but when it was new, newish, I got it, I splurged on it, and I learned how to program and everything, and I literally did a takeoff to touchdown just with FMS and autopilot where I did auto throttle and I literally hit like go and it even took off automatically. I didn't touch a thing and I let it land and then I just parked it. I'm like, that was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I like the slant alpha stuff. Although when the dash eight is redone by this company, because this is the highest, in my opinion, this is the highest end you can get. And so when they do their dash eight, then I'll learn FMS just for that. But Otherwise, yeah, it's super smooth. And um, so I'll just come back here, keep an eye on things. And there we go, yeah. I guess we could have gone a little higher, but well, not really. So 83 miles for the next VOR. When we get to 54 miles, or 53 on this one, then we'll change. And then get set up for um, landing already. It's going to be very... See, now we're gonna, just going to haul, of course. 
you know that you know um, that should clear the train. I did check the mountains, and I think the highest peak is only 9,000 feet. So even though it looks close, it's not. Um, don't worry about standard barometer. Checklist right now. Um, gear up, obviously, a long time ago. That's all done a long time ago. Oh, the auto pack to cut out, which I think is automatic in this version. And then adjust the cooling doors, which we're just going to leave them open. Although you could close them now, probably. Um, yeah, seatbelt off at cruise. No, seatbelt never comes off when I'm flying. Seatbelt stays on. So because we're so close, we can do kind of an approach. Get the destination weather. It's not going to matter today. Oh, I guess I can turn my landing lights off. I actually, I leave them on a lot. Just because there's more stuff to click. But we'll turn them off. Um, otherwise, landing lights at 10 grand and arm the spoilers. Auto brakes, that's too soon for that stuff. So then what I'll do in my videos is I will give people sightseeing, either with music that I've written or just sightseeing with the sounds cranked up. Um, but wow. because we're doing slant alpha, we got to pay attention here. We only got a couple more miles before we make a change. So let's do a quick outside all together. Look at the wings that bouncing wings. around. Isn't that amazing? Let's check that out. Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Awesome. It really does that, obviously, too. You know, yeah. when I've ridden in airplanes. So, this is so cool. The mountains. And the sounds change. Wow. Did you go around? Look at that. Everyone that I know that has flown the 7-2 has absolutely loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you could do a lot of crazy things in it. If you're in trouble, you can get out of trouble. The running joke, if you can see the runway, you can land on it type thing and it's interesting too because a lot of times I'll use spoilers if I miscalculate things and somebody was getting on my case about it you know like in every video you use spoilers well someone else chimed in and said I'm a 727 pilot and we use spoilers every descent that's just yeah. what you do because yeah. apparently the thrust was so much you it's hard to get down sure. you know so we use um, spoilers on almost every descent in the 737 do you really you do. good to know Kind of a, um, it really saves the airspace. It allows oh, you to send and that, you, that way you don't back up traffic because you get there. Oh, see, I oversped because I'm too busy talking. <laughs> see, whoops. Let's bring that back. And you're there's, not clacking, you're slacking. You're not clacking. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So now this is how we change VORs. Why is my vertical speed coming down? What? Oh, because I drew back throttle so quickly. How come my alt didn't hold? Whoa, look at that. You saw me click that. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do... Let's do this. Because I got... A little bit of mock tuck with your, uh, your overspeed. Yeah, I don't want... me. Okay, there we go. Let's do IS. So it'll bring us... Slow us down to get us back down to 18,000. But yeah, you saw me. Yeah. It was in out hold for a minute. It right? should be, yeah, it should turn green when we get there. And it should stay green until I disconnect. Yeah. Interesting. That was weird. I've never, there are no bugs in this aircraft as far as I know. But yeah, look at my N1 is like 40% wow. just to cruise. So anyway, we way blew our intersection. So the way I do um, radio changes is I'll come down here. I'll do heading select, heading select, and then I'll change radios. And I'll come up here, and we'll do our new course, which is 342. There we go. Then I'll use heading bug to get us in that vicinity. And then it's lit up here in yellow, so that means I can do it down here. Exactly. And there we go. So now, okay. it's now in, have out. It's game, but that should flip. There we go. It doesn't hold it. It should still say, it should still be green, right? Well, we'll see what it does. Yeah, it is all hold up there. I don't know. Whatever. All right, we will... Um, what do we need to be? We need to be... Okay, we were supposed to be at 16,000 feet at that intersection. So now I need to head down to 10,000 already. So we already blew through the top of the descent because I was so busy talking. We descend at 310 in this aircraft. But because it's 10,000 feet, 
Let's actually just go all the way to 250. No, take time. I'll add a little bit of time to the flight, but that's okay. 10,000 feet is where we want to go. So now we want to do a new... Actually, we're going to draw this back gradually because you can imagine what's going to happen as soon as I hit... Yeah. As soon as I hit that. Come on. And boom. So we'll draw that back gradually. See, it has curves around it like hunts sure. for your track. All right, so you see now we're flying into this VOR. And then once we do, we're going to fly outbound 110. Nope, see 110 plus 180 is 290. But that's just 355. Hmm, I messed that up. See, that's my outbound 110, which is actually three, oh, okay. 390, right? 290. Sure. So that's really say 290. Because at some point from that one, you're going to intercept with the other. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have the. No. Okay. And then we should get. When, then once we get the. Um, um, da, 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 NDB. That'll help me too. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out why is there a localizer. Is that just to get you between the mountains? Yeah. If you were going to land on that to north, you know, north facing runway, you'd find mm -hmm. a localizer in almost to the. And then you would. And then land straight in. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is for the runway. Yeah. But it's an offset yeah, approach. Yeah. Okay. Some sort of a... Alrighty. LBA or, it's all circle of land, quite honestly. It's yeah. Cool right. Land. Right. Let's start slowing down. Bring back... Oh, that's the um, gear horn. When you bring back throttles all the way. Oh, yeah. It does not like it you. Like mm -hmm. Alright, so... Doo -doo -doo -doo. This is very different when I'm, like, talking to you what I'm doing. Because I'm like, wait a minute. What am I forgetting? <laughs> Everything's good. We haven't had any sightseeing, but that's okay. So, um... Light. Yeah, it is. And plus, Slant Alpha is so busy. Because sure. even if we had five more VORs, it'd still be busy. So, um, we're coming down to 10 grand. Alt select isn't yellow. I'm slowly, we're not going to slow down to 250 quite yet, or it's going to take us forever. See, here's, now we're going to start descending. Okay. So then, of course, which you know, but my viewers don't always notice, I would control my rate of descent with throttles once we're holding at our speed. And, um,. We normally don't have to come down to 250 so soon, but it's going to get hairy here in a minute. In fact, we can probably... Uh, I can't see the runway. Or the airport is like over here, right in that little pocket probably. Maybe. I don't know. Well, we're 25 and getting closer, so... All right, let's bring this down to 250. And then we start us to rate of descent. So I base my rate of descent on a thousand feet per minute and eight miles per minute. However, that was we're not we're doing way less than eight miles per minute at two fifty, of course. But whatever, I'll just control my rate of descent my throttle. Uh, when that gets to zero, we need to go outbound to ninety, and then that's sixty-two miles. You know what I might do? Just so we don't add twenty minutes to the flight, let's gun this thing a little bit. Help your descent rate too. Exactly. To at high speed. Yeah, and then once we get closer to, once we get closer to ten thousand, which is, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make this eleven thousand, so we can go faster, for a while, because <laughs> we're way ahead of schedule. All right. Um, Actually, the FAR is saying uh, cruising at below ten thousand feet. Oh, so, so I could do, do two thousand. You can do three fifty at two at ten thousand. Okay, let's do that. See, I learned something. That was an interview question. Was it really? Way back somewhere. <laughs> so something screwy went on here, because now we blew through our IS hold. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> we blew right through our IS hold. What the heck? What? Come on. Come on. Weird. Oh, well. Alrighty, let's get a little bit of sightseeing in, just because we can. And I'm gonna let, it's not even coming down now. Come on. Weird, anyway, I'll let that worry about itself. Quick and low flight. I wonder what city that is. I wonder what airport that is. Huh. Out to the ocean. You can see mountains on the, on the horizon there. And then you can see the heat coming off the back. 
That's so cool. And then, of course, oh, I like the city down there. Is that awesome? And from altitude, it looks pretty realistic. So they got the wing view with the flex going. And then the other side. And then GoPro. And then my cheat. Okay, is it coming down? Why? It still isn't finding the altitude hold. Let me just bring this way back. Because now we got to start coming down. Because now we're ahead of schedule. Because we got eight miles plus altitude. So we got five miles, roughly four miles to get down to 10,000 feet now. So now <laughs> we're behind schedule. <laughs> All right, so let's just bring throttles back. Until we get the horn. There we go. All right, Um, one thing I was going to show you. Nice. One more thing I was going to show you is we have the flyby view. No way. Check this out. Isn't that That's awesome? awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and then you can do things like this, and you can get like really close, and all this fun stuff. Some airplanes you can see the pilots. This one doesn't have them. But sometimes you see pilots in there. But all that stuff is modeled in there. Look at like wow. the engineering the engineers panel and they see the APU. Yep. The APU panel. <laughs> the engineers panel. Alright, so now we got to do something here. Okay, so now we're cooking. So now we're at we're almost across the VOR. So what we'll do, yep, see we're losing it because we're two miles up. So come down here here quickly quickly hit heading select and then we're gonna do what i should have done is this whoopsie i missed the whole step because i was talking normally i'd flip that over there to see where it is and then i would flip this one so it'd be ready to go because now i'm not ready to go but whatever and then we're gonna fly what did i say a bunch of times like 290 and then like you said we either pick up the localizer Oh, wait, we might not pick this up from that far. We might actually have to fly outbound for a while. Because there's one... Yeah, see, okay. Whoops. Yeah, well, that, that, let's, um, let's go back to this radio and do 290. Because this is a localizer. Oh, so by having it in DME2, assuming there's DME, when this flips, then we'll be able to, be able to do it. So we're going to go like this. I try to do about 45 degrees. And then localizer is ready, so we'll go like this. So now when we get our DME, assuming we do, especially because there's DME written down, sure. um, then we can flip around and um, we can use this to kind of keep track of where it is. And then we'll use DME for this kind of arc-like thing. And because we're the fast aircraft, we're going to take the C&D track. Cool. And there we go. So what are we at? 12.3... Okay, at the NDB, we have to be at 2600, period. No exceptions. And why? The NDB's back here. So at 3, at 4.3, that must be 3 plus 4.3. We gotta be at 2600. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna calculate that. So if we're. We're not picking that up yet. So that's about 62 miles. We got to so on 62 miles. We got to get down to 2,600. We're cooking right along, and we're over water all of a sudden. <laughs> we're cooking right along. We got to get down 7,400 thousand feet per minute. Would be seven and a half minutes, eight miles per minute. Puts us at. Uh, why am I forgetting that last calculation? So if we're like 48 to 50 outbound, then we'll start coming down more. And then by then I'll hand fly. Because that's when the autopilot is more complicated than hand flying yeah. at that point. You're spending more time working there. Mm -hmm. And bumping things around when you can just do it. So get ready for the approach. Um, I, I'm doing this a little bit early. We already know the weather, but I'm going to put these on max because I'm a baby. And landing lights should come on now. We're at 10,000 feet. Remind me when we're done to do the lighting stuff. It's awesome. super cool. Um, what I'll do then, is it this one? Is I'll arm my spoilers. Even though I'll probably need them. I just arm them anyway. 
seatbelt's always on when you fly with me. Um, Want to get down to 180 for approach speed, but here there's a 185 max. We're going to go way slower than that because I'm going to have to buy myself time. Um, so we're good. We just got to get flaps down, gear down, which obviously we're way too early for that. So now we're just going to do a little bit more sightseeing. And then um, um, 2,600 feet by the NDB. So once it's... Oh, that NDB kick in. There it is. Boom. Of course, there's no DME with that. And there's no DME yet for the localizer. Um, I'm going to get my heading bug ready, though. So when I do see the localizer mm. pop in, I can use it. Sure. And then I guess if it's a localizer, I would use auto glide. Because if I'm landing with ILS, I use auto glide slope. Mm -hmm. And this will auto land, and it does quite well. I mean, you go halfway down the runway, but it works. Um, so I would come down here and do auto glide slope. But would I do that for this? I guess so, because you would kill autopilot at minimums and then make your leg to the left, right? Yeah. In this case, we could uh, use it. We could use it, and then at three DME, go left. Yeah, the risk could be, you know, engaging out hold mode at mm. at minimums. Right. Sure. Sure. Okay. Because otherwise, it's going to continue. to... Well, see, that's what I normally do. Right? Is I'll sure. I'll set my autopilot for the final altitude. I'll set my autopilot at minimum. Yep. But by then, I'm usually manually flying anyway. Yeah. But just in case. That's how I do it. So, okay. So, even without realizing what I do, yeah, that's what I do. I'll set this to minimums. Okay. So set that to minimums. Okay. And then, um, oh, I guess I can get some more throttle in if you want to keep your speed up. Or, or we would set it to a glide slope intercept altitude, in which point we'd spin it to the missed approach altitude. Okay. Yep, I understand that. Okay. What I can do is hold our heading to match the NDB. Like so. And then come down here and flip this over to the localizer. And it's 335 degrees. Well, that might have been where, okay, I didn't miscalculate it. The 335 was the localizer. Uh -huh. The 290 was outbound. I didn't do anything wrong, okay. And this was supposed to be 335. So can I do one click at a time? Not anymore. Okay. Cool. So it is picking up the localizer, it just doesn't have DME. So why isn't it, why isn't it turning yellow? Cause it's not a VOR? This is localizer DME right on the chart, though. Yeah. I do know that a lot of times you do pick up the local or a, a VOR before you get the DME. Sure. They're different yeah, things. Take, yeah, so let's just do this to line this up with it. And then once we do, we'll worry about DME. And how's our speed doing? Oh, we're fine. We're holding that too. We're going a little slower than we need to, but that's because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I do know what I'm doing. I just <laughs> haven't flown this yet. That's the other thing I talk about during my videos a lot, too, is if you're flying a company route, you know it. Like yeah. when you did the SeaTac one for us the other day, you yeah. know it. I don't know where the heck, you know, I know where I am <laughs> on the globe, but I don't know. So if I were to, and that's why I don't practice, because kind of the niche of my channel is learning together. Yeah. And I don't want to practice that polished flight. I could do this twice and then record it. But what fun is that? It's not fun for me. And then I sound like a robot. So having these little things like, oh, I wasn't wrong. Whoops, and then not paying attention to my localizer. <laughs> you know, I, I have noticed you've not used the pause button once. In in, oh, right. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when I do make edits and cuts in my video, it's just for time. Yeah. It's not because I had to cheat. You know, sometimes if I do a VOR flight and I'm getting really frustrated, I'll pop up the map for a second. Just... Then they'll pop it away. Sure. And I might cut that out. But, yeah, no, I haven't paused or anything. I'm just trying to line this thing up and keep our speed up. I'm just going to, once I line this up, I'm going to check those gauges. What are we? Okay, so we lost DME. Do we have the DME tuned in radio? Too? I was actually going to do this. So we're 40 out, and this is 62 out. So we're 12 miles out. I should probably start coming down maybe. Oh, well, now the localizer got picked up. Look at that. Wait, are you... Sh is, uh, what's in Radio 2? Radio 2 is where we came from. Okay, okay, gotcha. So that'll line us up. Let's start coming down. I'm going to bring that down to 200 knots. We're going to come down to 3 grand. And I'm going to bring this back. Because when I do IS hold, it's going to pitch us up to slow down. Hey, I could use spoilers right now, maybe, but I'm not going to. 
um, because we're, like, behind schedule. Um, I might need to because we're not slowing down (laughs) at all. Spoilers out. Listen. Did you hear that rumble? It sounds like it's a rumble. I turned up the subwoofer for us. And then once we reach it, I'm going to come back. Actually, I'm going to go right above 200 because actually, no, I will do flap one as soon as it comes down. Then the rumble goes away. That's so cool. And we're armed automatically. Flap one because see how the tail is coming back? No. And once you screw up, you don't recover in the 727. It is impossible. Let's see if I can get another, like, some screenshots for thumbnails here. There we go. All right, are we coming down finally? We're going to go steep. We need to be at 2,600. Oh, wait. I know what I can do. I forgot about this. Hang on. I can go, like, this. Yeah, there we go. Um, and like I said, the thing I probably could do better is more accurate on my flap schedule, but oh my freaking goodness, you could spend all your time, where is my, yeah, I mean, I have it kind of memorized, but you can hear the drag from the first set of flaps too, that wasn't there, so, see now we're pointing at the NDB, okay, so I didn't screw anything up, because now we're pointing at the NDB, we're going in the localizer. I don't I don't expect a glide slope on this one. It doesn't say anything about it anyway. There's no glide slope on that, right? It's just localizer. And I know we have to be at 3 DME. Yeah. So at 3 DME, we got to be um, at 2,000 feet. Yep. So actually, 2,000 is actually the minimum, technically. Um, because we're doing C and D. Sure. So technically, it's 2,000. Um... And then that's 296. So I could set that heading bug to 90, right? 7, 8, 9, 6. Yeah, for the turn. Although I'm going to do it manually. But I could then use the heading hold on autopilot and keep using it. But I'm not going to. So I'm hoping it says on the chart DME. I'm hoping DME picks up as we get closer. Yeah, that's... Oh, there you, there you go. There it is, 22. So at 3 out, we got to be down to uh, 2,000. Okay, well, 26. That 26 is for the NDB crossover. The 2,000 is minimums when we make our turn. And then from there, it's visual. So it's 2,000 at 3 DME. And then this 3... Now, this 3... I know the people watching can't see, but... This 3 DME, what is that in reference to? Is it 3 miles from this? It's another... Or is it 3 three from... It's 3 miles from the... VOR. The the localizer. Okay, it has to be, right, or else how would you know, right? So it's basically an arc. Essentially, yeah. Or it's an oval. So 3 DME, we turn. Then we're going to kind of go into like 2.7, and then it goes back out to 3. We turn, we go out to 4, and we just... And this is a standard rate turn, maybe? I don't know what that would be. I would assume it is. Maybe? I don't know. And then, it's, uh, hey, first officer, you see the runway over there? Okay, we're turning. Okay, pretty <laughs> much, yeah. So then I think we're at six and we're 18 out. I got to drink some water. I've been talking more than normal. It's a real teamwork exercise, yeah. especially if you're sitting in the left seat. Mm-hmm. So let's slow us down now to 180. Let's spoil these spoils. Spoils on this. That's my spoiler horn because we're like slowing down and getting close. Mm-hmm. Next set of flaps, so we don't have problems. And what was 180, 190, 160 for the next flaps? And then flaps in and, or spoilers in and armed. We got the localizer. We're at 6,000. We're gonna have to nosedive pretty soon. So I think I might actually take over at this point because we're, we're coming way too high. Mm-hmm. So this is where I might actually fly manually. So. Oh, no, you can see the runway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do, this is a pilot. And I shouldn't need any rudders, though. Not until we get on the ground. So we're going to push down. And it just floats. I'll let you fly this, too, later. It just, like, I'm barely touching it. That's awesome. Acknowledge that. 
right? Um, I should probably bring in a set of flaps because we're gaining speed. It's going to cause things. Okay, so now we're at 13 DME. All those flap changes make such a difference. Does it make a big difference in the 738? Do you yeah, really so notice it? You can notice a pitch change. Okay. It's actually pretty rare to fly through flap configurations, though. Yeah. Uh, adding flaps, at least. Yeah. I would think so. Like, I know the B1900, I guess pilots hate using the second set of flaps, so they don't use them unless they need them, and then if they need them, it's, like, right before touchdown. That's what I read. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And we, we skip through flap progressions. It's normally flaps one and then flaps five. Oh, shoot. That reminds me. Thank you. I totally, totally forgot this whole thing. This is on my checklist. It's just I'm not looking at my checklist. So you do a landing, set the bugs, flaps 30, which is four, uh, 5 o'clock, and 121. I set the bugs, and it's VREF plus gust plus 5, which I yep. assume you know, obviously. But in this plane, so it would be... What well, would be 121 plus gusts plus whatever, but I'll just go between 120 and 130. All right, so where are we at? 9 DME, so we're still supposed to point out that NDB because I'm not paying attention. But you got to see how this, you know, and this is the conversation I had off camera a couple of days ago was if you follow everything the way you're supposed to, there shouldn't be such thing as like a dangerous airport. But if you're flying over a field and you screw up, you're going to live. <laughs> If you're flying the TVOD and you screw up, look at this, we're below train, you're not going to live. So that's the difference. But if you fly by the numbers, of their station passage, so we're going to hold our track because now we would have the localizer, which I'm not paying attention to because I'm talking. So let's try to line up the localizer a little bit. And what are we at? So now we're supposed to be at 2600, and we're not. So we're going to spoil this a little bit. We're going to have a spoiler horn because of our speed in our flaps. And um, we're going to come down. So I assume this may be a little uncomfortable, maybe? Yeah. A little bit? Not terribly, though. No. Okay. So it's still within the somewhat realistic realm? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything less than 2,000 is not okay. comfortable. Okay. All right. The hardest part about this approach would be losing visual contact and doing the missed approach. Uh-huh. I bet. Because then you would be missed coming right at the incoming traffic. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is where I get into trouble. I like to sightsee now. And I can't because I have to do an arc. So what I should do is fly the plane and just do replay. Okay, so we also have to slow down. So there's our three DME. So we're going to fly out to the heading bug. And I'm going to spoil more because we've got to be fast. we got to be slower. And back in. All right. So now we need to be at 2,040 and we're a little high. Why am I starting to sweat? I take this so seriously. <laughs> so seriously. There's a runway. There's TVOT. I should set up another view to look out the co-pilot sign. But. All right, so now this is where people screw up in this plane. Like, they'll do all this perfectly, and then they won't watch their speed. Um, I'm going to go gear down now. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're at 4. No, we're at 2 DME. So then a 4 DM, 3 DME, again, we turn in. Let's, um, okay, let's not descend anymore. <laughs> Gears down, like I said, a flaps. You were aiming for flaps 30 at 121. And because I don't have visual of the runway, oh, yes, I do. Okay, what's that flap schedule? Super fast. Um, whatever. That's what... <laughs> See, uh, see, this is what happens. Yeah. See, you take your eyes off. Now, it did say max turn one. Oh, yeah, so you really got to gun it now because you got all yeah. that drag. You're flying so dirty. Nose pitch up to keep the speed down. Throttles to increase your rate of descent. I assume that's the same in, right, in all jetliners where you use your pitch for speed. Throttles for ascend and descend, except in some situations. Obviously, um, we got to uh, start slowing down. What are we at? There's the three. There's the three. Now we're going to turn out, and then we get to four. We start our turn. So yeah, so following the numbers, this isn't dangerous. But if you screw up, holy crap, I'm so nervous. I'm why am I nervous? I like stalling when I'm going way above stall speed. <laughs> and there's four. 
And this is where not having peripheral vision makes things so difficult. So I'm going to go as wide as possible. Actually, we're following that track pretty well on the chart. I think so. It said max turn speed 185. I don't know why you would want to go that fast. So we're, what, we're at 700 feet. The runway is at 20. So that's not quite... I actually, I'm going to pitch up to slow down and stop descending because um, yeah. I, I'll lose visual of the runway. Oh, my gosh. Where is this runway? <laughs> <laughs> I should have set the heading bug. Like I said, the flaps. Oh, my gosh, my flaps are not where I thought they were. We're going to have a problem stalling. More flaps, more flaps, more flaps, more flaps, more f Where is this runway? I hate not having peripheral vision. Surprise yourself, it's gonna be right there. There it is. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want to stall. Do don't want to stall. Don't want to stall. Yeah, but. And you're at flaps 40. Whoops. That's why <laughs> I took full throttle to do anything. <laughs> okay, let's. Where to go? Okay. Oh, look at that. <sighs> Wasn't the best, but I didn't practice or anything. Okay, I'm going to try to level off until the Pappy agree with me. Okay, so I'm going to go sterile, which is rare for me. And we don't have to talk out a crosswind landing or anything, but I'm on the rudders. Just, oh, no, I'm not very going sterile, am I? I'm still talking through it. <laughs> okay, I'm so nervous because this is my best plane to land in and no one's ever watched me do it next to me. I want to left at my landing yesterday. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Oh my gosh. See, there's a tree right there. <laughs> I know I'm a little low, and I know the running's longer than it looks. Okay, here we go. Oh, come on. Spoilers, those are not people screaming. Nose wheel down gently. Oh my gosh, I'm on the center line. <laughs> I'm on the center line. <laughs> Flaps coming in. Reversers to what, 60 or 40? Yeah. Auto brakes are doing their job. Reversers are off. And then disengage auto brakes. And roll it out. Done. I'm nice sweating done. bullets, man. <laughs> the float, though, was dumb, but I normally don't float. I normally land on the touchdown zone, hey. which I think I texted you when I was at MSP watching planes land. Not a single plane landed on the touchdown zone. They land halfway down the runway. It yeah. seems like it. Yeah. So when I land, where I landed probably was where a plane would have landed probably, yeah. right? So I shouldn't be so hard on myself for floating. And with perfect weather and perfect runway conditions, I would rather float and have a greaser than nail that touchdown zone. Of course, in adverse weather and poor runway conditions, sure. you want to plant that thing. You don't want to grease that, which is I talk about a lot when I do my crosswind stuff on my channel is I'll say you don't want to grease the crosswind landing <laughs> because you will could roll, you could slide. You want to plant it. You don't want to hit it at 300 feet per minute, <laughs> but, you want to but, plant, sure. yeah. but you want to plant it. Wow, I'm sweating. No spoilers can come in. Oh my gosh. Whew. Okay. Yeah, the big thing for the touchdowns on is the first 3,000 feet of the first third. Okay. And, uh, but so if you aim for the big boxes and mm -hmm. land within okay. in the marks, you're going to be. So I was pretty good then. Yeah. Nice. All right, so I forgot what the flight time was. I think that was 40 some minutes, maybe. Which, again, my flight times are always longer because I slow down too soon. Could I panic? But if I were to, you know, like if I do Minneapolis flights, I've done that so many times. I'll just fly in at 180 knots and then boom, slow down last second, you know. Whew. All right, so we'll back taxi back and meet everybody at the whatever it's called. <laughs> I'm so discombobulated. Yeah, they're not doing so well, are they? Here they come. And oh, oh. <laughs> he's going to hit the brakes. So normally we would start the APU now. Hey, maybe you can help me with this. I always screw up switching to APU power. 
I always blow it. So let's try this. Let's start the APU, right? Because if I just start it, it's not going to screw up anything else. It's just yeah. starting the APU. So let's start that. And, whoops, I'm trying to use my yoke like a steering wheel again. Um, let's pull into here. Oh, I guess I can turn my, tack my landing lights off <laughs> before I blind everybody. <laughs> um, so off camera, for those, you know, who are paying attention to details, I already turned off a lot of this stuff while he and I were talking. Um, except my landing Okay, I totally screwed that, whatever. I totally screwed that up. Let's just park right here because this is how I do it. Sure. <laughs> and we'll... Set the parking brake. Okay, so now, how do I transfer power to APU? Because I always screw it up, and then it doesn't yeah. work. So do I close these now, and it should automatically do it? Interesting. Because if... I think that's... Where do I go to APU? Synchronize when lights are out. So that's just going to show you what's available. On the oh, Okay. That's going to show you, yeah, what on that. Um, this will show you what's available. Yes. This. So when those lights are out, it's synchronized, so you shouldn't okay. have a bump. I think that's what that is. So if I start, so I just go to APU now and then close? Yeah, I would close those first. You close them first. And now you should be able to. That's just showing you that, that the AC volts okay. are still on. Oops, I meant this one, sorry. I meant this one up here. Yeah. And everything's still running. Yeah. So if you're I, on APU power. If you've been on the APU thing, you should see AC. If you go to the APU start panel, you should see AC amps. Is that what this is right here? Of it. Yeah. So when you clicked it on, they, that jumped up. So when I closed, it jumped up. Yeah. So it's working. So it's online. Okay, so that's in the previous model, that's exactly what I did. And everything went completely instant silent. So that must have been the way it was written in this. Yeah. Okay. So it isn't that complicated. At least that's my understanding. It's a right. different system. Right. But that makes sense. Right. So then what I would also do then, um, what I normally do is I pull up to the gate. Yep. And then I do um, GPU. Sure. And then I do um, external power. Yeah. And then you can close the engines. Um, and I can't it's remember. Really air cart is like for the packs. Yeah. So passengers won't suffocate. Yeah. <laughs> you can keep some air conditioning back there. Okay. So um, we're not going to... Yeah, so the engine's turned off, as you can see here. But everything is still running because the APU, which I have external power, so I can turn the APU off now. Right? Yep. Because air car's connected and external power is connected. And so now I can turn this off. And we'll hear it wind down. And obviously hydraulics will get all goofy. Yeah. And I do have a shutdown checklist, which I'm not going to do because I'm going to let you fly. So we're going to sign off and we're going to play with some lights. And he's going to fly. But otherwise, that's going to be it for us. That is the TVOT approach. Subscriber request. I always take subscriber requests and I always bump them up my list. So if you have a request, as long as the flight time is under 90 minutes because of real life stuff, any request you have, let me know and I'll do it. Um, as long as the aircraft already have. I do get a lot of requests to purchase aircraft. I'm not in a position to do that. So if there's a freeware, make me aware of it. But if there's a purchase, unless you want to support me or sponsor me in some way, <laughs> I, the, uh, purchase aircraft right now or not, I can't do that. But anyway, anything you want to request, I'll do it. Obviously, I did this. You know, I keep my promises. I was sweating bullets, but I did it. Otherwise, regular flights next time. I actually have another, I have a sub request coming up. Um, I won't say what it is because I don't know what order is going to come in, but I do have another sub request coming up. A few personal things. Oh, let's watch this guy take off. Oh, wait, where's my camera? Look at that. Look at, there he goes. Boom. Anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed the flight. I obviously did. I hope my pilot friend enjoyed watching and not flying. I could kind of tell he's itching to do things. <laughs> but he's going to get his chance right now. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for your continued support. If you found me by accident, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends. If you have a request, leave them in the comments below. If you have any constructive things to say, positive or negative, leave them in the comments below as well. I read every comment and respond to all that I can. I don't know what I'm doing next because my flight plans are already out of order. You'll find out when I find out, and I'll catch you next time.